Okay, so in this tutorial I'm just going to quickly show you how to build a uh, more complex parametric uh, model of a building in, uh, in Blender. Now, um, one of the power, powerful features of ODS is the fact that it's actually a Python-based interface, so um, you can uh, actually build some quite complicated models uh, a lot quicker than you would in, in other sort of packages. So um, when we just start with this plain, uh, uh, plain plane and um, just going to tab into it, delete the faces and actually just um, select everything and extrude out um, sort of some perimeter zones of a typical floor like this. And then um, if I delete all the, uh, the, the faces, um, I'm just left with just the outline of, of the floor plate that I want to have in my sort of parametric building like that. So I'll tab back out again, and what I'll actually do is add uh, an array modifier now to actually be able to create the levels that I want. So I'll make them go up. Now I want them to go up at a constant count of three meters, and you'll notice that that makes it go up quite a bit higher than you expect. It's because I've already scaled it. So if I go three divided by eight, that'll actually make it just the right size. There we are. And I'll make it uh, 16 stories tall, like this. And that's our basic sort of floor layout, so I'll apply that for now. Then I'll add another modifier, which is just a simple deform, and in this case we'll just twist it sort of 180, uh, sorry, 360 degrees um, from the top to the bottom. So these are our rough floor plates that we want to sort of start with. Um, so I've only I've managed to get to this in just a few operations. If I uh, if I now um, just sort of duplicate and save save that, move it to another layer. What I can actually do now is um, using ODS, which I've already enabled through the uh, user preferences. I've turned on ODS and the Energy Plus. I should now just be able to go uh, make walls. And that actually just pops up the walls of the building. All right. um, now, that didn't do it exactly like I wanted. It's actually twisting the walls as they go up. So I'll just undo that and apply the modifier first. There we are. Now make those walls, and there are all of our walls of our buildings, of our typical levels. Now over here I still have um, a floor plates, which I'd like to make the floors. Uh, now in, normally in a building modeling program this would be quite a challenging uh, problem, because um, you'll have lots of floor areas which are just like these little triangles here, and lots of overlapping elements where the roof of one floor touches the floor of another. In, in awkward ways. Um, so that's not a problem with, with ODS because it uses a surface-based modeling routine. So what you do is we duplicate them so that we have our overlapping floor and uh, roof uh, plates now. So floor and ceiling plates are all overlapping and you uh, intersect uh, edges on the two selected objects. So that's now actually intersected them and then you actually fill the floors. Okay, and that's actually now made all of the floor plates um, that we need. So you can see that's just a little bit of triangle there. And now if we join these two layers back together in, you can see this is a complete uh, sort of building which we can actually now select all the objects. We'll explode the linked flat faces, which just goes through and actually separates all the faces out into separate objects. And these will all become our separate heat transfer surfaces in Energy Plus. And then we're going to just detect and assign zones. And this takes a little bit of time here. So the actual interface freezes up just while it's calculating because it's quite a complex uh, algorithm. It's having to actually go through and find all of the uh, enclosed zones and actually try and work out um, where they are. And you can see up here, it's uh, trying ca to calculate that. So this is now it all zoned up. So you can see it's found all the perimeter zones. It's found all the internal zones and we have our building sort of pretty much ready to go for Energy Plus. But um, it doesn't stop there. What you'd probably want to do, what it's also done as it's, as it's sort of tried to search around, is it's actually labeled which walls are which, they're outdoor walls or if they're interior walls. So what we can actually do is we can select objects and we can select all of the perimeter objects of the same type and we'll move them to another layer. Okay, because we want to have windows in our building. Currently there's no windows in it still. So now we've selected all of the outside walls, like that. What we actually want to do now is go through and ins inset faces and then pop them out to make uh, windows all the way through. 
Now, um, that would normally be quite labor intensive, but this is where it becomes quite powerful having the uh, scripting interface that Blender has, because what you can actually just do is I've written this little script here, and you can see it's only about sort of 10 lines long. But what this will actually do is if I select all the objects, it's gonna go through, inset all of them, and then pop them out to, uh, to, to make um, the right um, uh, sort of size windows that I want. So I just made it uh, 0.2 divided by eight. The reason I did that is because it's already been scaled. So if we go through now and actually just go run script, you can see there it, there it goes, it's popped out all the windows. But currently they're still labeled as outdoor walls. So what you just do is you press A to select everything and this is when you now do detect and assign openings. Okay. So that's now actually selected all these openings and it's actually found them as being windows, right? And it's got them all selected there. Now what you'd wanna do is you'd normally wanna actually apply a different material to that. So over here in the material um, uh, editor, you can actually, again, select all the objects by type, um, uh, um, by type, window and then you want to actually add a new material. So you want to make a material, we'll call it window in this case, or we could call it six millimeter clear float. Uh, the new blender allows arbitrary length um, object names to a very large number of characters. So um, you can really make anything you want. You can um, make them a little bit blue in color and you can see it's only applying it now to this, this object down the bottom here. Um, so what we have to do is copy those materials to the others. And you can see all of the windows are now blue with a little bit of the wall around it, right? Um, you can also then turn on the transparency to say 0 0.5. And here, if you wanna make all these objects transparent, just type in display transparent. And there you go. So we've got all of our windows marked up and all the relationships between them and their walls are correct. And you can see here, we've got it all properly zoned uh, with windows and walls and everything. Now, to get the proper model running, you'd still want to actually apply some uh, materials to this. And this is where in the new uh, ODS version 0.6, um, we actually have this construction manager here. So I'll just actually clean up the interface because um, you don't want to see all these other menus and you probably don't want to see that anymore either because it's served its purpose. So we'll drop that away. And what you can see here is we've actually got a construction manager and there's a button here that says import constructions. And you can actually just go to wherever your uh, Energy Plus is installed. It's normally user local Energy Plus data sets. And you can bring in say the ASHRAE 2005 Handbook of Fundamental Materials. So you can import any IDF and it will bring in all of the materials from there. So there's all your constructions ready to go. So what you just do is um, you will uh, select all of your walls say here. There it is. And select objects by uh, type. Okay, so that's now selected all the external walls. And we'll select a uh, light exterior wall and we'll apply it to all selected. Okay, so that now all these exterior wall objects have that type of construction applied to them. Okay, similarly, we can select um, all these objects here, which are of type. Um, so we can select objects of the same type and these will all be sort of roof type objects. So we can go um, light roof ceiling, I suppose. There we go. And we can apply that to all selected. Similarly, we can select the internal zones, uh, internal walls. If we go in here, there we go. Select objects by same type and we can apply say a light partition to all of them. Um, what else do we have to do? We still have to probably do the floors, internal floors. So if we just try and select one of those internal floor objects uh, like that, and we select all of those type of objects. Um, let's go again, um, light floor, there we go. So we'll apply that to all selected. Uh, down the very bottom here, we probably still have a slab on ground type of object. And if we select all of those type of objects, um, actually, they're all of the they're all of the, um, uh, the the floors, and you probably want to specify these as a slab on ground separately. Um, but 
we should just be able to set them as just just for fun here let's we'll make these a, a different type of uh, medium floor there we go so now we've applied all of our materials to everything we still haven't applied the material that we want to the windows necessarily so um, what we'll just do here is um, select a window but we'll just use a plane we specified as six mil clear float so down here we'll just specify it as a window type glazing and the default here is six mil clear float so we'll just leave it uh, like it is so this model is now all pretty much set up and ready to go in energy plus so if you just select all of it you probably want to save it at some point um, like that and if you actually just come back now if you wanted to you can set again complex schedules HVAC but we'll leave them all for another tutorial and in this case the new version of uh, ODS version 0.6 actually has multi-threading support which we'll touch on in another uh, tutorial but this is very very cool it allows you to actually have um, multiple simulations all queued up and you can make maximum use of your quad core or 12 core or 16 core uh, machines that you have these days so um, we'll just use our default um, uh, sort of weather file and we'll um, export this to energy plus okay so you can see that took a while just to export because it's a bit of a complicated model and then we'll just run it and if you look in our window here you'll see the energy plus model is just running away there okay so this is a quick tutorial on just how um, you can build extremely complicated models in, in uh, Blender with the ODS uh, Studio add-on uh, very quickly. Um, you can see here it's uh, queuing up and if we wanted to actually change uh, one of the aspects of the model we could for example with the multi-threading support we could change this uh, window here. Let's change it to a thick, thicker window 0 0.0012 let's say. Uh, sorry, 0 0.012, so that will be a, a 12 millimeter thick window. And if we wanted to do that, we could just go back here, change it to EP 12 millimeter. All right, select everything, export it. And we could run that one as well. And you can actually see it's just going to queue up the second job and make use of two. And then one of my CPUs is being used for recording at the moment. So you can see here it's actually started up as well. So we have multiple simulations all running at the same time on a rather complicated building. And because everything in ODS and in inside of Blender is scriptable through Python, you can access all of this and you can actually go to the extent where you could have created this entire model without actually entering the GUI at all. You can write a, a Python script that will do all of this in the background. So it opens up a lot of powerful aspects for doing uh, parametric studies and all sorts of parametric variations, even to the point where you can do parametric uh, geometry. And actually, you could have built this model from scratch multiple times over, testing different configurations. All right. So we'll leave it there for this tutorial, and um, we'll uh, we'll explore some of these more advanced features in depth in in later tutorials. All right. Thanks for listening.